SCR IAS Academy welcomes you to the current affairs online video lectures for IAS 2016 examination. Commandindia.com is our website. Today's date is 4th May 2016. Let's see what are the important topics that we are going to discuss today. First topic that we are going to discuss about Ponzi scheme. In this topic, you should know what is Ponzi scheme and in GS syllabus is coming in which paper is coming in GS paper 3, how Ponzi scheme operates and how to tackle Ponzi schemes, what are the various acts are available to tackle the Ponzi scheme and so on. Second topic that we are going to discuss today is what are all the important steps taken by Government of India to popularize yoga? When International Yoga Day is observed and what are the recent measures taken by Government of India to promote or popularize yoga? Third topic that we are going to discuss is recently the portal for contract labor payment management system is launched contract labor payment management system launched what is the importance of this payment system and fourth topic that we are going to discuss is regarding what are all the major schemes implemented by government of India or you can say through department of sports for the development of the sports in the country. So major schemes being implemented by Government of India for the development of sports. It's a very important topic for prelims as well as for mains examination because it's a, it gives overall picture about all major schemes being implemented by government to promote the development of the sports. And fifth topic in this, we will discuss about Comprehensive Integrated Border Management System. Comprehensive Integrated Border Management System. This is a new initiative and it is coming in the news for last two months. And in the recent Palankot terror attack, government wants to increase the security coverage in its western border that is between Pakistan and India. It will provide five layer security, five layer security in India's western border so that terrorist infiltration will become impossible. Next topic that we are going to discuss is Next topic that we are going to discuss is Patanko Jano Initiative. Patanko Jano Initiative and it is important for the prelims examination. And seventh topic that we are going to discuss today is Investigative Units on Crimes Against Women. Investigative Units Against on crimes against women is an important topic for mains examination. And the last topic that we are going to discuss is on INS Kalwari. INS Kalwari is very important for the prelims examination because recently INS Kalwari underwent C trial. It is a first scorpion submarine produced under Project 75. So in this background, we will discuss what is Project 75, what is Project 75 I, features of the Scorpion submarines and it's a joint project between which of the, follow, which of the following countries, that is between India and France, like Brahmos is a joint project between India and Russia like that. 
Scorpion submarine project that is project 75 is a joint project between India and France. So today we are, we are going to discuss so many important topics. So let's start the video lecture and first topic is tackling Ponzi schemes. What about investment? There may be two, may, two kinds of investment. One may be legitimate, another one is illegitimate. Ponzi schemes comes under illegitimate one. In the legitimate investors will invest in any scheme, any schemes or policies. And after collecting the money from investors, the company invests the money in the legitimate business, in any business activities and the profit emerges. Now the profit is shared among the investors. Profit is shared among investors. It is a legitimate business. but. It is not happening in the Ponzi scheme. Then how Ponzi scheme operates? Here investors invest in the Ponzi, the companies which are offering the Ponzi schemes and here they will provide high rate of return. Almost legitimate businesses cannot provide such kind of interest rate. So they provide high rate of interest, but how Ponzi schemes generates income or profit? When new investors comes, Ponzi schemes takes money from the new investors money, then gives as a high rate of interest to the old investors, to the old investors. Then how new investor will, will get money or high rate of interest? When another new investor comes, they will take money from the new investor. Then this person becomes old investor. Like that, whenever new investor comes, the person becomes older one like that. They will take money from the new investor and will give it to the old investors as a high rate of interest. Suppose no new investor comes means what will happen? The project will collapse. Here this is the person invested lastly and apart from this person no new person's investor means they will he will suffer he won't get single penny if no new investor comes after this person means he will lose the money completely here we are describing only one person's Ta consider one lakh old persons are there and one lakh new persons are invested and it goes two lakhs four lakhs Ponzi schemes attracted 10 lakhs to one crore people invested heavily in this fraudulent schemes. If any business which operates based on the profit they can sustain for long term is a legitimate business. So it's not a legitimate business and now you understood about what is Ponzi scheme, how it operates and so on. Classic example for Ponzi scheme is Sarada scam. Sarada scam. You might have heard about Sarada scam. It happened in West Bengal. Thousands of crore rupees have been cheated in the Sarada scam, and the case is going on. Government of India enacted many laws to regulate the or to block the Ponzi schemes and take strict legal action against the offenders. The ministry in charge of this is Ministry of Corporate Affairs. 
Ministry of Corporate Affairs investigates the fraudulent schemes through its office called as Serious Fraud Investigation Office. Serious Fraud Investigation Office is the office which is responsible for investigating all Ponzi schemes under Section 235 of Companies Act. Under Section 235 of Companies Act 1956. Also, under Section 212 of the Companies Act 2013. Please remember about Serious Fraudulent Investigation Office and Companies Act if you, 1956 and 2013. Companies Act 2013 brought some important features. Companies Act 2013 bro has brought many features. By using it, we can block Ponzi schemes. It identified fraud as a substantive offense. It defines fraud as a substantive offense. Substantive offense is one important point. Second important point is that Companies Act 2013 gives statutory status statutory status to the Serious Fraud Investigation Office. Is a second very important point for the prelims examination. The third important point is that Companies Act 2013 provides stricter norms of corporate governance. Corporate governance norms have been strengthened under the Companies Act 2013. Another important point is that by using the technology and by using the data analysis and forensic tools, foreign tools, we should be able to identify frauds as soon as possible or at the early stage. Think of a situation, if you are able to identify Ponzi scheme after its occurrence, what is the usage of it? People will get affected because of the Ponzi scheme and after Ponzi scheme happened, after arresting the person offenders and producing them before court and in India judge population ratio is very less, judge population ratio is very less. Cases will take 10 years, 20 years to get completed. So, best way is to identify the frauds at the early stage or you can say before people get affected. So, for that we need technology, data analysis tools and forensic tools. So, Companies Act 2016 provides for these provisions. Remember the four important points. If in GS Paper 3, if Companies Act 2013 is asked, you can write these four points. One is regarding fraud is made as a substantive offense. Second, statutory status to the Serious Fraud Investigation Office and use of technology. And fourth is corporate governance norms. Now, let's move to the second topic of the day is regarding popularizing yoga. In 2015, first International Yoga Day was observed. International Yoga Day is celebrated on June 21st. June 21st. The day is recognized as International Yoga Day by United Nations General Assembly. UN General Assembly accepted June 21st as International Yoga Day. Why June 21st? Geographically, June 21st is the longest day 
in the northern hemisphere for a particular year june 21st is the longest day in the northern hemisphere remember it is a very important geography point and now let's move to the various steps taken by government to promote or popularize yoga ministry of ayush has launched a scheme for voluntary certification of yoga professionals to recognize yoga professionals ministry of ayush has launched a scheme for voluntary certification of yoga professionals in association with quality council of india in association with quality council of india here ayush stands for ayurvedic yoga unani siddha and homeopathy now it is a it has a separate ministry status before that it was a department under ministry of health and family welfare on year back it was made as a separate ministry the scheme that launched by ministry of ayush aims to promote yoga as a preventive and health promoting drugless therapy health promoting drugless therapy most of the countries in the world are practicing yoga and as a civil service aspirant you may also practice yoga in the morning time between 5:30 to 6:30 in the open air according to the various research it improves our concentrating ability and india at present is the world's diabetic capital india is the diabetic capital of the world most of the youngsters are getting affected because of the diabetes especially the type 2 diabetes earlier type 2 diabetes used, used to come after 40 years now it's the persons who cross 30 years are being affected by type 2 diabetes because of the lack of physical exercise lack of physical exercise and so on and type 1 diabetes usually affects children the reason is genetic causes so type 1 diabetes as well as type 2 diabetes is increasing in india and youngsters are getting affected the main problem with the diabetes is that there is no cure at present once affected we have to spend money throughout the year to control the diabetes not to prevent to control the symptoms of diabetes if diabetes managed if diabetes is not managed properly diabetes may affect our eyes kidney and heart so it provide it puts economic burden imagine if you are taking drugs on daily basis throughout the life surely it's pro- it puts economic burden on the poor man so it is better to take 30 to 40 minutes daily exercise and yoga to avoid diabetes and other diseases now let's move to the third topic of the day that is a portal for contract labor payment management system contract labor payment management system recently government of india increased the minimum wages increased the minimum wage to the contract labors to rupees 10000 so for contract labors minimum wage is 10000 and 
if any person gives salary to contract workers below 10000 it is an offence it is based on the consumer price index and dearness allowance so based on the consumer price index and dearness allowance government of india hiked minimum wages of contract laborers to 10000 rupees the portal that is contract labor payment management system is a portal of coal india limited remember it is the first important prelims point it is a portal of coal india limited coal india limited is created the payment management system for monitoring the complaints of labor payment and other benefits to the contract laborers under an act called as contract labor regulation and abolition act 1970 under contract labor regulation and abolition act 1970 the payment system applies to all subsidies of coal india limited all subsidies of coal india limited as we all know coal india limited its main branch and its various subs- uh, its various subsidiaries and contracts are given to various private players various private players and these private players ha- hires the or takes contract laborers but there's no data whether contract laborers getting timely payments and other benefits to ensure that contract laborers get their payment and other benefits coal india limited developed a portal called as contract labor payment management system by using the payment system people can come to know about the number of contract laborers in cl and its subsidiaries number of workers engaged payment status minimum wages paid and so on now let's move to the next topic that is major schemes implemented by the government of india to promote development of sports in india so at least you should be able to remember the names of 425 schemes so that while writing answer in gs paper 2 or 3 or in essay any sports topic you can get good marks example is always important to fetch good marks in the gs mains examination the first scheme is to provide financial assistance to national sports federations by using the fund national sports federations should conduct national championship national championship at the senior junior and sub junior level for both women and men second scheme is national sports development fund national sports development fund under which financial assistance or fund is provided to various activities to the allied athletes here remember the fund is available mainly to the allied athletes who have the prospects to win medals in the international competitions like olympic games asian games so not to the all athletes the fund is available only to the allied athletes who have the medal prospects at the international comp- competitions like olympic games asian games and so on third scheme is a scheme of human resource development human resource development in the sports fourth scheme is a special cash award scheme 
special cash award scheme for winners of the medals at the international sports events not only for the players coaches also will get special cash award fifth scheme is scheme of pension to the meritorious sports persons scheme of pension to the meritorious sports persons the meritorious sports person after their retirement may not have source of income may feel financial insecurity so under the scheme of pension to the meritorious sports persons after their retirement pension will be provided on monthly basis so that they may feel financial security and it will attract many sports young sports persons in future so that if they achieve they may get financial security from the government of india in the form of pension in future it will attract many young sports persons we should honor the sports persons for their achievement for that many national sports awards are given national sports awards are given like rajiv gandhi kel ratna award arjuna award dronacharya award dhyanchand award etc about each award we covered in our paid service video lectures for ias 2016 and 2017 batch the awards not only for the sports persons and also for their coaches for example dronacharya award is to recognize best coaches so it's a award for best coach another scheme is national welfare fund for sports persons national welfare fund for sports persons if sports persons require assistance for medical treatment and other expenditure they can get fund from the national welfare fund for sports persons another scheme is scheme of sports and games for persons with disabilities so a separate sports scheme for persons with disabilities the last but important scheme is hello india scheme out of all sports schemes this is very important from the prelims point of view especially for 2016 prelims because it is launched very recently and is also called as national program for development of sports national program for development of sports are also known as hello india it has three major components one is annual competitions second talent search third sports infrastructure and so on the scheme is launched in 2016 now let's move to the next topic that's the fifth topic of the day is comprehensive integrated border management system comprehensive integrated border management system and this is very important for gs paper 2 and the foreign policy within foreign policy india pakistan relations the comprehensive integrated border management system aims to establish five layer security system five layer security system to completely stop infiltration in the india's border with pakistan what do you have do you have any idea about india pakistan border india pakistan border it means we are asking a question from geography point of view think it is a border 
first point it is 2900 km long border between india and pakistan one more point is that the border is not flat it has various geographical features in the kashmir the border has glaciers high mountains and so on glacier like siachen glacier you can quote as an example when you come to punjab and haryana there are many rivers crossing this like chelam janab ravi bias satluj these rivers crossing the border and when you enter rajasthan desert is a common border the tar desert is a common border in gujarat and in many places flat surfaces is a border between india and pakistan so the 2900 km long border this india pakistan border has various geographical features so guarding the entire stretch is a very difficult task so we need the help of technology to completely stop the infiltration that is coming from pakistan to india so with manpower is very difficult to manage this kind of difficult border so we need technology not only single technology we need many technologies and put in different layers so that even if one technology fails with the help of another technology we can find out the infiltration so the recently proposed comprehensive integrated border management system aims to establish five layer security system on india pakistan border so five layer security even one or two layer fails by using another la layers we can identify the infiltrators coming from pakistan to india so the length of india pakistan border is 2900 km and the new security system aims to use sophisticated technology now let's discuss some important names of the technology cctv cameras can be used thermal image technology can be used night vision devices can be used battlefield surveillance radar can be used underground monitoring sensors can be used because recently border security force has found the underground tunnel consider this is a border from the pakistan side to indian side there is a underground tunnel so via underground tunnel terrorists can reach india so we we should be able to find out underground tunnel for that underground monitoring sensors should be installed and laser barriers can be used laser barriers can be used to track all movements from one side to other side In the last couple of months laser wall technology is coming in the news regularly laser wall technology is coming in the news we expect one question from on this topic in gs paper 3 so prepare on this topic well for 100 words we already covered about this technology in our paid service and the laser barriers will be established in 130 unfenced sections of the riverain and mountain areas from jammu and kashmir to gujarat if the technology is implemented in the for the first time since independence india will completely lock its western border if the five layer security system is established successfully it will completely lock india's western border with pakistan another important point is that 
the security system has 360 degree coverage 360 degree coverage security system should not only focus on the pakistan side but should be able to focus on indian side as well because some people may help from indian side so that infiltrators can reach easily so the security system should be able to provide round the clock 360 degree coverage so that we can stop infiltrators from coming from the pakistan and also the person from indian side who is helping infiltrators can also be identified so is another important point already we discussed about few technologies apart from this technology we advise you to remember names of this technology so that if asked in the gs paper 2 or 3 you can right answer easily for example in gs paper 3 if you get a question from your point of view how technology can be used to stop infiltration in the indo pakistan border means you can quote these technologies like construction of the fencing flood lighting border outpost and later surveillance equipments like handheld thermal images long range rec observation system is also called as loras and night vision goggle and devices etc so each point is important and remember all the name techno- technology names now let's move to the another topic that is watan ho jano initiative watan ho jano initiative it's a initiative by government of india for orphans and children from militancy hit families and weaker sections of the society in jammu and kashmir so watan ho jano initiative is applicable to the jammu and kashmir state where it is applicable to the orphans and children who are affected from militancy hit families and weaker sections of the society the scheme is applicable where and the families then purpose what is the purpose under this initiative the educated youth from the jammu and kashmir in the age group of 15 to 24 years will visit various parts of india and they will be exposed to the diverse social and cultural heritage of india so government will sponsor the trip and the youth coming from the jammu and kashmir the age group of 15 to 24 will be exposed to the diverse social and cultural heritage of india now let's discuss about seventh topic of the day that is investigative units on crimes against women investigative units on crimes against women in many crimes against women investigation goes slow in some cases or getting delayed or weak investigation so we need to strengthen the investigative apparatus especially crimes against women for that purpose recently ministry of home affairs proposed to assist the states in setting up of investigative units on crimes against women in more than 700 police districts with 50-50 cost sharing center will provide 50% and states or uts should provide 50% of the cost 
in setting up of the investigative units on crimes against women especially the major crimes like rape dowry death asset attack and human trafficking you can use this example in gs paper to one important prelims point is that according to the 7th schedule of the indian constitution subjects like police public order or state subjects so center cannot interfere in the state subjects so investigative units will act as a additional police units and will not be will not replace the existing state police forces so police and public order are state subjects under 7th schedule of indian constitution now let's move to the last topic of the day that is eighth topic ins kalwari ins kalwari is very important for the prelims 2016 examination each and every point is important and recently for the first time kalwari went to the c trials kalwari is nothing but indian navy's indigenously developed scorpion class submarine first point it is a submarine and it is a scorpion class submarine scorpion class submarine scorpion submarine is produced by france so india developed scorpion submarine with the help of france so it's an example for indo india france collaboration in the defense projects kalwari means tiger shark india and france launch a project together called as project 75 or 75i under which six scorpion class submarines will be built at masagan docks limited masagan dock ship builders limited another important prelims point is that masagan docks limited is located in mumbai it's located in mumbai in 21st century warfare aircraft carriers aircraft carriers and submarines are going to play a crucial role if third world war occurs these two will play a very crucial role aircraft carriers are also called as floating island are called as floating islands in our separate video lecture in the paid service section we cover about submarines how submarine functions and various advantages of submarines and india's position in the submarines and comparing india with us and china in case of having number of submarines and technology and kalwari is the india's first scorpion class steel submarine built under project 75i in collaboration with france company called as dcns dcns remaining five scorpion submarines will be delivered to navy by the year 2020 so india will have six scorpion class submarines by the end of 2020 so these six scorpion submarines will form core of the india's submarine arm for next two decades 2030 and 2040 these six scorpions six scorpion submarines will play crucial role for 20 years in this image you can see the structure of scorpion submarine submarines have fish like structure they have fish like structure so that 
they can have least resistance while traveling in the underground water they face least resistance that's why it designed like a fish and it is a fin called as caudal fin and it's colored as a black one important technology you should remember is air independent propulsion system it's a separate main question in gs paper 3 is a air independent propulsion system its advantages you should know within 100 words try to prepare a separate note on air independent propulsion system within 100 words the main advantage is that because of the system the submarine can stay underground to water for long time submarine can stay underground for long time if the system is not in place means the surface the submarine has to come to surface for oxygen so air independent propulsion system generates water generate generates oxygen not water is oxygen generated and there is no need to come frequently to the surface another important plus point with the system is that because of that it is difficult for the enemies to find out where submarine is located if submarine comes to the surface frequently enemies can launch anti submarine missiles and they can destroy our submarines so with the help of the air independent propulsion system submarines can stay longer time in the underground ocean water there is the end of today's kind of us video lecture and it crossed more than 30 minutes we try to provide 30 minutes kind of us video lecture on daily basis and subscribe to our youtube channel to get notification whenever we release our video lecture and we want one help from your side invite your friends who are preparing for civil service examination to subscribe to our youtube channel so that everyone can benefit thank you